Hi guys, my name is Daryl, and today I want to show you the exercises that are in Vince Jones' Master Series Volume 5. Now if you're following along in my book Invincible, this would be on page 229. Now if you don't have a copy of Invincible and would like one, you can go to Amazon.com or you can go on my website at www.darylcurrent.com. So just like the other four volumes that I've already shown, I'm just going to go over the exercises. So I'm not going to go over the programs, the nuances of the programs, the sets, reps, and the actual uh, nuts and bolts of the program. Uh, if you want to learn about that, then just follow along in the book. And again, if you don't have a copy, um, I would suggest that you grab a copy so that way you can follow along with us. So here they are, guys. Here are the exercises for Volume 5 of Vince Girona's Master Series. So now, guys, I want to show you the 90-degree racing dive row. And this is the actual rowing machine, low, the low row machine from Vince's gym. And the, you want the cable to be 16 inches from the floor. So if you don't have this particular setup, you can use it on a, a regular cable column that adjusts up and down. So you want the cable to be at 16 inches off the floor. And this is the actual handle from Vince's gym for this particular exercise. And it's kind of cool because it's, it has like this little hook, so it just makes it really easy to get in and out of the exercise with. And so what you're going to do is just going to hook, and then you're going to step back, getting the weight off the floor, and then you're going to bend down, put your, your chest on your thighs here, and you're going to keep your elbows slightly bent. So it's important to keep the elbows slightly bent at all times. And you're going to start with your hips down, so you get a good stretch on the back, elbows are slightly bent, your head's going to be down, and then you're going to pull, and as you pull, you're going to kind of sit up so that your back will arch, and then you go all the way back until your handle touches your low pec line, and then you come back down. So you inhale as you go back, exhale as you pull, and you come back in nice and controlled, and then you keep your arms slightly bent when you're fully extended out here in front of you, and then you're going to exhale, arch the back, and then come back down, and nice and smooth, So the key points of this exercise, guys, is you're going to start with your chest on your thighs, arms are going to be out, slightly bent, you're going to pull, as you're pulling, you're going to be, begin raising your shoulders up until your back becomes arched and the bar touches the low pectoral line. And then you're going to slowly come back down, dropping your head back down, and then extending your arms out. The key is, nice and smooth, exhale as you pull in, and then hold the exercise for one to two seconds in contraction then come back slow. Guys, that is the racing dive row. All right, guys, now I'm going to show the, the high bench row. Now, this is the actual high bench from Vince's gym, along with the actual dumbbells. And the bench has to be at least 22 inches high because you want to be able to get your arms so I can put my arms down fully uh, extended without them being bent or crushed at the bottom here. And so, what you want to do with this particular exercise, this works the entire back. Now, you want to start with the dumbbells underneath the bench, and then we're going to pull up. And as you pull up, you're actually going to lift your legs up too until you're coming up. The reason why you lift your legs is because you're also hitting the endpoints down where the lats are actually connected down into the sacrum. And so as you're pulling yourself up, you're going to engage the entire uh, back. And so. This is a complete back exercise. You raise the dumbbells out to the side so you flare them out. You come up and you pull back in. And guys, that is the High bench row. All right, guys, now I'm going to show you the high bench laterals. 
Now I prefer the bench being a little bit higher up. Um, I demonstrated the last exercise on the actual high bench from Vince's gym, but this is just another, another option that you can do if you have a bench this high. But I like it better here because this way you don't have to worry about ever hitting the floor with your dumbbells. So you're gonna grab the dumbbells, <coughs> lie on top of the bench, arms are down, and all we're gonna do is just laterally raise the arms up. And so the key points here are when you're raising up is just to come out all the way up to 90 degrees. You don't have to go too far up past that. Then you just go up nice and smooth, hit the end point, and then come back down. It's very fluid, and it should be a very smooth motion. You don't want to throw yourself up into it. Um, if you have trouble extending the arms all the way out, because if you have elbow issues, you can actually just keep your elbows up, and you can bend your elbows at 90 degrees here. Just come up like this as you're pulling up. But if you don't have any restrictions in your elbows, I suggest that you go out just like this. That is the high bench lateral raise. All right guys, now I'm gonna show you the front and back pull down. Now just a word of caution, if you have shoulder issues and you're restricted with your movement, any type of rotator cuff tears or anything like that you're working through or if you're just limited in your range of motion through your shoulder, then I would totally not advise doing this exercise. But if you have really good flexibility and you have good muscle balance on both the anterior and the uh, posterior deltoids and also the medials and, the, and your latissimus dorsi is pretty well developed, then I would recommend this exercise. Um, this is how you do it. You're gonna go ahead and sit down underneath the bar. Now, just like all the other exercises, you don't wanna go fully arm extended here. You want to keep the elbows slightly bent, so that, that I'll keep constant tension on the back, on the lats. And so the first thing we're going to do is gonna, we're going to pull down. Now we're going to arch the back. So you come down, you're going to exhale, you're going to arch the back, and you're going to contract as, as tight as possible here, and you're bringing the bar down to the low pectoral line. And then you're going to inhale, and as you come up, you're going to swing the elbows back, and that's gonna bring your head forward. And this is gonna cause the scapulas to retract while still keeping the back arched. So you come in, still keeping the back arched, and then you're gonna pull down as far as you can down to the back of your neck. And then you're gonna inhale as you come back up. And then we're gonna protract the scapulas. And you keep the elbows slightly bent here, and then you're gonna pull down to that low pectoral line and really hold the contraction tight here keeping the back arched and really contracting as hard as possible. Come back up, you go through the window here and then you're gonna keep the elbows back. You're gonna, remember we're gonna bring those back. The scapulas are gonna retract. You're gonna come down as low as you can to the back, keeping the back arched. And then you come back up, you inhale. And then we're gonna protract the scapulas. You're gonna exhale, still arching the back here. Contract to the low pectoral line and then come back up. So this is what it'll look like in real time, so it looks like this. So the key points to this one is you want to come down, bring the bar down to the low pectoral line, you're going to arch the back, contract, hold for one to two seconds, and then come up, and then you're going to bring your head forward. As you bring your head forward, you're going to bring the elbows back, retracting the scapulas, and then you're going to come down over as far as down as possible, and then you're going to hold the contraction one to two seconds, and then come up, and then go through the window, protract the scapulas, and then you're gonna pull back down, arching the back. And when you come all the way up with the bar, don't extend the arms all the way up. And keep them slightly bent, 
even as we're going over the head and coming back down. Guys, that is the front and back pull down. So now guys, I wanna show you the dumbbell incline press. And this is the original bench from Vince's gym. And this is how he would set it up. He would just take a flat bench and then he'd set up on a block to get the right angle. It's about a 25 degree angle. If you don't have this type of a setup, then you can use the modern day adjustable bench like this one over here. And it's just gonna be at an angle of 25 degrees. It's very similar to this. The only difference is with the modern day ones, um, it just sometimes a little bit more um, cumbersome, I guess. Uh, really, the big difference between the two is that with the modern day incline bench, it's um, you're kind of limited to where you can put your feet. So if you don't have a flat bench like this, then you can use the modern day bench like this. Um, if you do have a flat bench at home, then I just suggest you just build a block similar to this and then you just put your, your um, built-in incline. So that's a great way to kind of, it's the poor man's incline bench. No. Hey guys, now I want to show you the dumbbell incline press. Now this is the original bench from Vince's gym. This is how he would set up the incline. He was just a flat bench, and he would set it up on a block like this. If you don't have something like this, then you can use the modern day incline bench, which is adjustable, and you want to adjust it just to the 25 degree position. So that's the ideal angle for this exercise. Now what you're gonna do is, you're gonna grab the dumbbells, and then you position your dumbbells over your chest with, the, with all four bells touching, and then you're gonna bring the dumbbells down to the side of the body, parallel to the body, get the stretch, exhale, and then press right back up, touching the bells together. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Now the nice thing I like about this type of a bench is that you can keep your legs up. Um, using the, the modern day incline bench, you can't get in that position, so you have to keep your feet down. It's not a huge problem, but sometimes you can use your legs to kind of uh, get the weight up. So this way you, you can't use your legs and it's just purely um, on your chest. So it's just a different way of doing them. But I, I really prefer doing them on this bench than the regular modern day bench. But again, if that's all you have, that's, that's fine. So guys, that is the dumbbell incline chest press. All right guys, now I'm gonna show you the barbell incline chest press. And again, it's just, it's just using the same bench as with the dumbbell. We're gonna go ahead and set it up to a 10 inch block at the end. So one end's higher up, at 10 inches higher up. And then if again, if you don't have the, this type of a setup, then you can just use the modern day incline bench uh, set up at, at uh, 25 degrees incline. So all you do, you, you would start today, I'm just not using a lot of weight, I'm just for demonstration purposes, but um, you, would, you would pull the weight up onto your legs, okay, and then you would kick back and get in position here. And then you bring the bar to your neck, just like the neck press. And then you're gonna exhale and just press right up. And you come back down, inhale, and then exhale. And inhale, exhale. And inhale, and exhale. Now what you do here, you know, your elbows are gonna come out wide here. So you're coming down toward the neck, stretch the pecs, so the elbows are back here, and then you exhale and you press up. You don't wanna just drop your arms down in here so your elbows are here, that's no good. So you wanna come down, get the stretch on the pecs, especially the upper part, and then exhale, press up. So you inhale, exhale, and press, then inhale, Exhale, 
and pressed. So the key points with that one, pretty simple. You want to make sure that when you're using the weight, you're going to bring it to your legs first. And then as you are going back, you're going to flip it back to get you in position. Uh, if you have a spotter, that, that, that's helpful as well. They can just hand it to you. Um, but otherwise, you're going to flip it. You're going to bring it down. Start with the barp over your head, over your neck. And then you're going to come down all the way down to the neck and then press back up. Now, the, the reason why we go down to the neck is because when you do that, it forces the elbows to abduct and go back. And then you get the stretch onto the pectorals. When your elbows are down low, you, you lose the stretch. It goes more into your anterior deltoid. So elbows back, and you'll get the stretch. And you keep them back, and then you exhale, and you, you press up. And then you're going to contract the chest really hard as you're going up. So the elbow is coming back in toward the midline. And that's what's going to really contract the, the chest. So guys, it's a pretty simple exercise, but it's very effective on the, especially the upper pectorals. And it's a great exercise um, to really bring that upper part of the chest out. And guys, that is the barbell incline chest press. All right, guys, now this is how you would do the half Gerona dip. So you're gonna grab the bar, you're gonna drop down, and I'm gonna point the toes to the floor. So we're gonna be in a crescent position. So you're gonna bring your feet forward, toes pointed, with your chin on your chest, so your feet will be underneath your chin. And then we're gonna go down all the way for the stretch. We're gonna do two small little bounces at the end so we can really get a deep stretch. And then we're only gonna come up halfway until the arms are uh, horizontal to the floor. You're gonna go down, point your toes, chin on chest. I'm gonna do one, two, and then come up. One, two, one, two, one, two. Exhale as you come up, inhale as you go down. One, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And so, <clears throat> key points here when you're doing the half Gerona dip is you're getting in position, toes are in front of your chin, or underneath your chin, toes are in front of your body, toes are pointing to the floor, keep your chin on your chest, go down. Hit two small bounces, and then come up. You're only coming up about three inches. So it's a half a Gerona dip. So now I'm going to show you the barbell decline bench pullover and press exercise. Now with the last exercise I showed you on the decline bench with the, the barbell neck press, very similar. And the rules still apply here. So if, you have, if you're using heavier weight, then I suggest getting a spotter. If not, if you're using light weight, then you can use this method where you bring the weight up onto your knees, and then you're gonna just come down to start here. But this one's gonna require you to, to bring the, so you're gonna to bring the weight over your head. So it's kind of like the, the tricep pullover and press, but this, we're gonna be on the decline bench. And you're gonna come over here, so you're coming down, and then you're gonna come up, and then keep the elbows in close, and then you push up here. So you come down, Go overhead, and then you're going to come to the low pectoral line and push right up. Now the key here is to keep the elbows in close as we're going back overhead. Then come in here, and then you flare the elbows out and press. So it's elbows out here. Come in with the elbows in as you go overhead, and then flare the elbows out and press. And then come in, and then flare out and press. And so you can either drop the weight down here and get up, or you can throw it onto your legs and get up that way. And guys, that is the decline bench barbell neck press. Okay, guys, now I'm gonna show you the barbell decline pullover press. Now this particular exercise you don't really see a lot of uh, from Vince's um, literature that's out there on, online and whatever, because just I think it was just not used as much in a lot of his programs, but um, it's in this volume. And it's a unique exercise. It's kind of hard to do by yourself. It's best if you do have a spotter because they can, they can hand you the weight, especially when you get tired, um, so you don't have to 
worry about uh, hurting yourself unloading the bar. But uh, for today, I'm just going to use the um, just a, uh, a four foot bar without any weight on it so I don't kill myself. But um, you want to set it up like this again. So it's on a block, it's on a 10 inch block. And you're going to use a flat bench. And the way you get in position would be. So for this exercise, it's best to use a spotter because they can hand you the weight down below. It's kind of hard to reach the, the bar over your head um, by yourself. So for just demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna do it like this with the bars up on top of my legs like this, and then I hook my feet and then start here. But if you're using heavy weight, I do not suggest that you do this position. It just becomes too difficult to, to handle the weight. So you're gonna start with the weight over your head. Your hands are just a little bit narrower than shoulder width. You're gonna come down and then you're gonna transfer your, you're gonna slide your elbows in toward your body. This is very important. And then you go behind your head, stretch, you pull over your head, and then you're gonna press. So you, as you press up, your elbows are flaring out to the side. Here. When you come back down, your elbows are gonna go to the side of your body to bring it over your head so your elbows are pointing to the ceiling. This is very important. If you flare your elbows out this way, that's gonna cause all kinds of stress on your shoulder. So you're gonna stretch overhead, press. Come back in, bring the elbows in close to your body, stretch overhead, come back over, press. Back down, over, press. So you're coming down to the pectoral line, and you come over your head, pull to the low pectoral line, then press up, then come back down. So the key points of this exercise is that one, you want to have a spotter of some sort, so that way they can hand you the weight. Um, and then when you're in position, you want to, you're going to bring the bar over your, over your head and chest. So you're going to press up. When you press up, you're going to flare the elbows out. And then when you come back down, you're going to pull the elbows in close to your body and then bring the barbell over your head so your elbows are pointing to the ceiling. And then you pull back over your head to the low pectoral line, and you flare the elbows back out, and then you press up. And you come back down, you pull the elbows in, go overhead, elbows go up to the ceiling, stretch, come back over, flare the elbows out, and then press. Very important because if you try to go back with your elbows flared out, that's just gonna, it can damage your shoulder. So you wanna be very careful of that. Guys, that's the barbell decline pullover press. So now, guys, I'm going to show you the dumbbell supine incline bench lateral raise. So you want to position your incline bench at about 70 degrees. And we're going to go ahead and lie back. Now you want to touch the dumbbells underneath your bench with your head on your chin and the legs are together. You're going to exhale. <sighs> And then raise as high as you can up to your head, about head, about head level. So the key points here are, you know, bringing the dumbbells underneath your bench, touching the bells together, keeping your chin on your chest, legs are together, exhale and come up, bring the pinky, pinky just a little bit higher than your thumb so the, the dumbbell will stay out in front of you just a little bit. And you want to get up as high as you can, about head level. Um, you, don't want to go any, you don't have to go much higher than that. Um, 
it'll get too, too difficult, plus you could impinge the shoulder joint. So you just want to come up as high as you can, about uh, eye level, head level, and that is the supine dumbbell lateral raise on an incline bench. All right, guys, now I'm going to show you the dumbbell upright row. So what you're going to do is keep your feet together. I mean, you keep your heels together, toes apart, knees slightly bent. Start with the dumbbells, with the, the head of the dumbbells touching, and then you're going to exhale. You're going to raise the dumbbells up and with the elbows flared out. Now this is what it looks like on the side, ver uh, side position to so go up. Now the key here is keeping your heels together, toes apart, knees slightly bent. As you're pulling up, you're pulling the dumbbell from your thigh out in front of you about 10 inches or so, about 10 to 12 inches. So you're coming out here. So you see I'm bringing my hands out in front of me. I'm not coming in here like this. That, that's a problem. And that's something you don't want to do because that, that'll actually hurt the shoulder. But if you come out, it's much more forgiving on the anatomical position. If we bring the elbows out here, a little bit further out, with the hands coming out a little bit further, bring the dumbbells out in front of you. So that way, you're getting the lateral head of the, the deltoid in this position without any impingement on the shoulder. If you bring the dumbbell too close in here, that's going to restrict your range of motion. It's going to put too much stress on the shoulder joint, and that's going to cause a problem. So we want to go ahead and exhale. And you're just pulling up to this point here. So it's kind of a user-defined motion because it allows you to um, find your, your own pattern here um, rather than sometimes you're restricted with the barbell where you're kind of coming up with your hands fixed on the bar and that could cause some problems some issues on the shoulder as well but the dumbbells allow you to have that freedom of range of motion through the through the joint so that you can get up without having to cause any problems on the shoulder joint and again keeping the dumbbells off your body is the key guys that is the dumbbell upright row all right, guys, now we're going to do what's called the Scott Press. This is, it was actually developed by Larry Scott, and Vince liked it so much that he just incorporated it into his programs. And it's a great exercise, and it's one that Larry developed. Um, he discovered this after he actually injured his shoulder doing very heavy, um, I believe it was military press style uh, dumbbell presses. And um, so he immediately went over to the, to the dumbbell rack and picked up a set of dumbbells and started doing this exercise, even though he, he, just, he just injured his shoulder and he felt like this range of motion was perfect. And so it allowed him to continue working out without causing any further damage. And also he discovered that this exercise is even better than the military press. So he just um, continued using it from there on out. And this is how you would do it. So there's a lot of variations to this exercise. Some people get confused with this exercise compared to the Arnold press, and they're both two different exercises. Um, but the Scott press, I prefer the most because it really focuses more on the entire shoulder girdle and the entire spectrum of the, of the deltoid. And this is how you do it. So you bring the dumbbells up, and you can, on this particular exercise, you can actually use heavy, pretty good weight. Um, for demonstration purposes, I'm just using 10 pounds, but Anyways, so you're going to start with your, your elbows in front, and your pinkies are going to be just a little bit higher than your thumbs, not the opposite. You want to be just a little bit higher, so that way you get, you're going to be able to have the freedom to kind of get this, this range of motion, this, this, this flaring action on the, on the shoulder, um, and it helps with the scapulas get back as well. So what we're going to do is you're going to exhale, and then it just, it's, a, it's a pressing motion, but you're only working three-fifths of the movement. So what that means is that, you know, so you'd have your, your basic pressing motion where you come up like this, and 
that's no good because when you get to a certain point, it just causes too much problems on the supraspinatus, and that can cause impingement on the rotator cuff and cause problems. So we want to avoid that. But this, what this does, it allows you to kind of get the, the full aspect of the contraction of the deltoid without going any further to cause impingement. And so what you do is you, you work that three-fifths movement. What that means is you're coming from, you're just going three-fifths. So you're sweeping your elbows out to the side here. And so you're kind of protracting your, your scapulas here. And then you're going to retract. Just like this. So you're kind of snapping your elbows back. And so I'm, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm flaring back, snapping the elbow back, and then just a small little lift at the end. And so if I were to do this with my shirt off and look in the mirror, you'd actually see the posterior deltoid pop out every time I pressed up a little bit. So you're going to sweep back and then just kind of snap that posterior deltoid, and it just... And I'm also kind of bringing my head forward. So as my elbow is going back, I'm bringing my head forward a little bit to work with the movement and to allow freedom of the shoulder to kind of get back a little further. So I'm, I'm not keeping my head back and restricting my shoulder joint. I'm actually working with the shoulder, allowing freedom to get past, the, to get the dumbbell past that joint and to get up a little bit higher to activate the posterior deltoid. Now this is a great one to do. Your shoulders will be absolutely pumped up if you do this correctly because it doesn't take much. Like I'm only using 10 pounds and my, my shoulders are already smoked just from demonstrating. But so you're going down and then you're kind of coming up into this, this flaring action here. So it's three-fifths movement. Just like that. And on these, on deltoid work, you can always go a little faster than you would exercise, other exercises because the, the range of motion is so short. Whereas, like if you're doing a bicep curl, you're coming all the way up. You can hold that contraction. You come down really slow working the negative. On the deltoids, it's very difficult to, go, to really hold that negative coming down through this exercise. So we don't want to do that. We want to keep it fast. You want to get those fast twitch fibers to really engage, and so that really brings the muscle out in prominence. It really shows the definition, incredible definition to the deltoids when, when you do this at a, at a faster pace. See, if you go really slow, it doesn't work as well, but when you kind of snap those arms back, it's incredible. And again, this exercise does not cause impingement because I'm really not doing much in terms of bringing the arm all the way up into its full extension. And that's when you can kind of crush your supraspinatus and cause all kinds of rotator cuff issues. But this is kind of, you know, we're sweeping back and then up a little bit. And it's an incredible exercise. I can see why Vince liked it so much. And um, I can see why Larry loved it so much because his shoulders were phenomenal. And this was the, what contributed to his development. Guys, that is the famous Scott Press. Okay, now guys, I'd like to show you the prone dumbbell laterals. And what you want to do is, you want to be on an incline bench. And this bench is probably about, you want to set it at about 45 degrees. And you're going to grab the dumbbells. And what you want to do is you want to support your feet so your legs are straight. So you're in this nice straight locked position. And then you want to grab the dumbbells and you want to keep your head over the bench. So you don't want to be down here with your chin against the, the pad. So you want to keep your head over the bench. And then we're going to start with the dumbbells down, facing each other. And then we're going to raise the arms up. And as you raise the arms up, we're going to raise the head up as well. So we start with the head down. And then you're going to, be, you're going to raise up. And then you bring your head up. Back down.
So the key points here is when you're raising the arms up, you want to turn your pinkies just a little bit. So when you come up, the pinkies will be just a little bit higher than the thumb. When you come up and you're going to hit that sort of the, you get as high as you can, almost head level. Um, you're going to come up and then you're going to just raise up a little bit with the head. Then bring your head back down as you come back down with the arms. Exhale, come up and then back down. Exhale, then come back down. So you're bringing your head up, and then you're bringing your head back down. Arms come down, arms up, head up, contract, back down. And this really isolates the, the posterior deltoid uh, with the, the lateral head and the posterior head. So it creates like a little bit of a shelf. It's a really great addition to the shoulder, and it's a great exercise to really help accentuate that, that aspect of the deltoid. So it's a great exercise. Guys, that is the prone dumbbell lateral. All right, guys, now I'm going to show the dumbbell kickback or the mule kickback. Sometimes it's uh, called that in Vince's literature. Um, so you're going to grab two dumbbells. Now the, the key to this exercise is to get down nice and low and then to kick the arms up like a, like a mule would, would kick, I guess. So you want to get down, you want to get down nice and low so the dumbbells are going to start at the front deltoid and then we're going to get some power here and we're going to throw them right up. Now when we go up, we want the elbows to, to kick up and get up nice and high so we can get that full extension. So as you're coming up with your butt and your, as your legs extend, your arms will extend at the same time. So you get down here and then you're going to come up and exhale. So you don't want to just be going like this. We want to get that motion, get some momentum, and then exhale and get those arms up. So it looks like this. So you take a deep breath in, like get into that nice, lo nice and low position. And so the key to this exercise, again, establish that, that low position with the dumbbells touching the front deltoids. And then as we go back, we get the leg extension, the hips up, and you tip. Your shoulders come down slightly, and you get the arms, elbows up, getting that nice full extension as you come up. That one takes a lot out of you. <laughs> guys, that is the dumbbell tricep kickback. Now guys, I'd like to show you the pullover and press. You're going to use a flat bench, and you're going to use either a straight bar or a diametric bar. And then you're going to grab the bar, bring it up, <coughs> and then bring your legs up. And you want to hook your heels at the edge of the bench. Then you want to be on the bench so that your head is off the edge. So you, you get the so you can keep your head off the edge of the bench. That's going to be important as we do the, the, uh, the bottom part of the exercise. You're going to bring the barbell over your head to stretch the triceps. And then your elbows are going to be up straight up here. Don't flare them out. Keep the elbows pointed straight up to the ceiling. And then you're going to pull the bar over, just over your head. And then you're going to go to the low pectoral line now from this position, you're going to flare the elbows out. And now we're going to press the barbell 70 degrees off the body. And you're going to exhale. So we're going to press out. Now it's important here to understand when you do this exercise, when you're pressing out, to not press straight up. So you're doing a 70 degree position. So. We're going to be at this. So if you were to measure this, this would be 70 degrees off the body. This would be about, this would be 90 degrees. We don't want that when you do this exercise. You want to be pushing 70 degrees away from the body. 
So this is, that's very important to understand when you do this exercise. So we're going to go overhead, keep the elbows in close, we're going to come right over the face, go to the low pectoral line, flare the elbows out, and then you're going to press the weight 70 degrees away from your body, right to there. Then you come back down the same way, and then you're going to pull the elbows back in close to your body, and you come back over your head, and then back down. So we're going to pull up over the face, keep the elbows close to your body, go to the low pectoral line, flare the elbows out, and then press 70 degrees away from your body. And then come back down, elbows in close, and then overhead, come back over the face, elbows in close, go to the low pectoral line, elbows out wide, press out 70 degrees, and then come back down, elbows in close, sweep over the face, stretch the triceps, back over the face, low pectoral line, flare the elbows out, press out 70 degrees, back down, elbows in close, over face, and then back over the head, low pectoral line, elbows are in close here, and then you flare them out, and then press 70 degrees. Then come back. And then overhead. Press out. Back in. So the key points here are on a flat bench, either a straight bar or a, diame a diametric bar, and then we're going to hook the heels at the edge of the bench. You want to make sure that your head is over the edge of the bench so you can clear the barbell as it comes over your face. You're going to bring the barbell, I mean bring your elbows in close, bring the barbell to the low pectoral line, and then we're going to flare the elbows out wide, and then you're going to push away from your body 70 degrees. That's important because that's really going to isolate the lateral head of the tricep. It's a real burner. So for this exercise, you don't need a lot of weight to start. So learn the movement. Start with a light enough weight so that you can really isolate and get to that position, especially that 70 degree position. And then once you master it, then you can start increasing the weight. But this is a great exercise. It's going to really blow up the triceps, especially the, the lateral head of the tricep. It's one of my favorite exercises. Guys, that is the pullover and press. Hi guys, now I'd like to show you the two dumbbell pullover. What you're going to do, you're going to use a flat bench here, grab the dumbbells, you're going to lie back so that your head is slightly off the edge of the bench, and then there's two positions with your feet. You can either keep your feet up here, legs crossed, with your knees at 90 degrees, or you can hook your heels at the edge of the bench with your knees slightly bent, and this is a little bit more stable of a position, so I prefer this one. And then you're going to start with the dumbbells parallel, all bells touching over your chest, and then you're going to drop the dumbbells down just a little bit past your head, and then curl back up and contract over your chest. So you come back down just a little bit past your head. Now here you're going to get a little stretch in the tricep, then you're going to exhale, pull the elbows back in, and then extend over your chest. Inhale, just a little bit past your head, exhale, and contract. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, and then inhale, and exhale. So the key points here are you want to be on a flat bench and you want to lie down so that your head's just a little bit off the edge of the bench 
and you can either go into a 90 degree position with your legs crossed or you can hook your heels at the edge of the bench with your knees bent. You're going to start with the dumbbells over chest, all bells touching each other. Then you're going to drop the dumbbells back behind your head, just a little bit past your head. Below. And then you're going to curl back up. Elbows lead the way. You come back to the starting position and then you, you finish it out into that full extension, contracting your triceps as hard as you can and the dumbbells will be over your chest at the completion. So it's a very simple exercise, a very effective exercise on the triceps. Can I get more of the long head of the tricep? It's one of those exercises that you want to start with lightweight, learn the movement, really focus on getting that strong contraction, go nice and smooth, and then as you progress, you can increase the weight. Guys, that is the two dumbbell pullover. Now guys, I want to show you the reverse bench push-ups. It's a great exercise for your triceps. What you want to do, get two flat benches. You want them spaced apart enough so that you can keep your feet on one bench while you're hanging off, holding on with your hands on the other bench. Now what you're going to do, you're going to get in position. So you want to be able to securely place your feet about the halfway point of the bench on the other side. And then you're going to come off the bench so your butt is off now of the other bench. You want to keep your knees slightly bent. You don't want to do this with your legs straight out. Keep your knees slightly bent, hang off. And as you drop down, you want the elbows to go back for the stretch. And so you're going to inhale, go down, elbows go back. And then as you come up, you're going to press up. And then you're going to continue to look up to the ceiling and lean back just a little bit, bringing your shoulders back so you can contract the triceps as hard as possible. When you come back down, you inhale, stretch, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Now the key points to this exercise, you want to be far enough away from the two benches so that you can get that nice deep uh, drop down and you want to keep your knees slightly bent so when you're going down, you want to drop down as far as you can to maintain a good stretch and then you're going to exhale, push up. As you're pushing up, bringing the elbows back into extension but then you're going to lean back a little bit so your shoulders are going to go back a little bit further to really extenuate the contraction on the tricep. Now when this is done correctly it's a very challenging exercise that's really going to develop your triceps. It's very similar to doing the, the dip stand reverse dip where you're going back into that crescent position and you're really locking out the triceps. So on both of these exercises it's kind of the same thing. You're going down and then you're coming up, bringing your shoulders back, looking up to the ceiling, and really contracting the triceps as, as hard as possible. When it's done correctly, it's a phenomenal exercise. One of the mistakes that guys make is when they do this exercise, they'll go down, and then they'll just keep their legs straight, like so, and then they just kind of do this, where they're just going up and down, and so the range of motion is shorter, and it's really kind of, really works more the elbows and doesn't really get the triceps as much because they're not getting into that full extension so when you're going to the full extension that's where everything that's where all the magic happens I guess you know you're going down keep your knees slightly bent and you keep your legs slightly bent because keeping your legs straight it's, it kind of limits your range so when you keep your legs slightly bent you can go down and you can get this unbelievable stretch here Elbows are way back, and then you exhale. And then you can really get into that contraction here by dropping the shoulders back, looking up to the ceiling, come back down, and then exhale. And contract, inhale, exhale. So you're using your body to create more resistance 
onto the triceps. And so rather than just sort of just working the elbows, now you're working the, the entire tricep as you're going up into that nice leaning back position. It's going to activate more muscle fibers when you do it that way. This is a guaranteed tricep blaster, and it's one of those exercises that isn't for everybody. So if you have shoulder problems, you don't have the enough flexibility to get down, to get those elbows back, then I would not do this exercise. I would definitely choose something else. Um, so this is an exercise for guys that you know, maybe have been doing this for a long time, that you've been doing the dips for a long time, and your, your shoulder flexibility is, is good enough to, to get down to that low position. Otherwise, it could be problematic. You could have you develop an injury from doing something that, as simple as this. So you want to always be careful and do this exercise um, to your own discretion. Now, if the exercise is getting too easy, which if you do a 10 by 10 on this exercise, it ain't going to be easy. <laughs> but if it gets too easy, and uh, you can always put a weight on your thighs, and you can hold it there, and that will give you some more resistance. Guys, this is a great exercise. I guarantee it's going to blast your tricep. Guys, this is the reverse bench push-up. All right, guys, now I'm going to do a barbell body drag curl. Now, this is a, a very unique exercise that Vince loved to do. And um, the reason for this body drag is that it really isolates the bicep. It's really going to hit, like, really up in the, the upper part of the, the fibers, really get a tremendous load of uh, intensity when you do this exercise. And that's the whole idea, because the bicep, as you know, has two parts. And this really isolates and kind of helps pull on the sort of the outside head of the bicep. And so what you're going to do here, like anything, you're going to keep your, like with all the exercises, that when you stand, you keep your heels together, toes open, knees are slightly bent so that the bar is resting on your thighs. Now we're using a false grip here, and you're going to keep your, your grip about just a little bit past shoulder width apart. And then you want to keep your elbows close to the sides of your body. Now, you're going to do exactly what the exercise calls for, and that's just dragging the bar up your body all the way to your chin. And you're going to exhale, and it looks like this. So keep the elbows to the side and back, and you're going to pull up right to the chin, and then come right back down, keeping the elbows pressed to the side of your body. And you go right back to the thighs, and then you exhale. And then come right back down. And exhale. And then right back down. And you keep the elbows, the key is keeping the elbows close to your body. Don't flare them out. You want to keep them in. That will really isolate the lateral aspect of the bicep. And then back down. Exhale, and then back down, just like that. So the key points here are keeping the, starting with the barbell against your thighs in this position with your knees slightly bent, heels together, toes apart, elbows stay close, don't flare them out, keep them close, <clears throat> and you're going to keep your grip. So when you bring your, if you hold your bar too, too close, with your hands too close, you're gonna, you're gonna flare the elbow. So you're gonna pull, I want you to pull to that point and find that, that range that works best for you to keep your elbows close to your body. And then as you drag, you're coming up, touching the bar all the way up to your body, up to your chin, and then right back down. It's a very isolating exercise. So again, if you're used to doing heavy curls with a barbell, where you're sort of throwing your body into it, and all that, I would recommend dropping your weight in half and really working on this isolation, and that's the key to it, is really trying to get that complete form so that you don't cheat as well as use a lot of momentum. So you want to slow your exercise down, especially on the eccentrics. So when you're coming down, you know, go really slow, like four to six seconds coming down, and then you can come up two seconds coming up. Hold for one or two seconds at top, 
and then back down real slow. Keep your elbows close. Really press them in tight. Come down. And then exhale. So when you pull the bar in <coughs> towards your body, what you're actually doing is you're pulling your elbows back. You see, so my elbows go back like this, and that's what's pulling the bicep. So you're really going to get isolated up concentration on that bicep as you come back up and down. And so like rather than when you go like this and the elbows out here, you, you're going to lose a lot of the intensity on the bicep and it's going to transfer up into your anterior deltoid. So we want to avoid that. So you want to you want to come up and you want to pull and really put all your tension into the bicep so those myofibrils within the bicep really have to fire and contract. <laughs> and so that, that's what's going to create that intensity. And then you come back down and work on that eccentric contraction as you come down. So you can really get that strength that you are looking for. Guys, that is the body drag curl. Now guys, I'd like to show you the 90 degree bent over peak curl. So what you want to use, you want to use a straight bar. You want to bend over. You want to grab the bar. You want to put your elbows to the inside of their knees. So you're pressing them against the knees for support. You're going to start with the bar down at the base of the ankle. And then you're going to curl up right underneath your chin and come back down. Exhale. The key points on this is just when you're, you're bent over, press the elbows in close, and then curl right up all the way to the base of the neck. You'll get a tremendous pump in the bicep. And this really draws out the peak of the bicep. It's a great exercise. That is the nine degree bent over peak curl. All right guys, now I'm gonna show you the overhead pull down behind the neck. And you just wanna use a regular lat pull down station or any type of a pulley that's up higher with a straight bar. So you're going to sit down. Now you're grabbing the, the bar, palms facing you, not away from you, but facing you like this. And then we're going to keep the elbows up, point it up to the ceiling. And then we're going to pull down the bar behind your neck. Then back up. You exhale. So the key points here, just keep the elbows up, then just pull that bar down as far as you can to the base of your neck. Depending on how big your biceps are, it will limit how far you can go down. So if you have real big biceps, you might only get about halfway down from your head. So you wanna come down and hold it. You'll get a tremendous pump in the bicep when doing this right from the start because you're gonna do an early phase loading and then as you start to come down, it just really intensifies the, the contraction. And so this, again, is another peaking exercise. And it really draws out the fibers so that you create this nice sharp peak to the bicep. So this, in conjunction with the the 90 degree bent over peak curl just really pulls out the bicep and so kind of helps with that separation of the definition. And so it's a great exercise. It's one that you want to go light on. Um, it takes a little bit of practice to really to make it feel comfortable. When you first do it for the first time, it just kind of feels awkward. But the key is, is really keeping the elbows up. Don't let the elbows drop down. You're going to lose the, 
displacement of the contraction on the bicep. So you want to be able to really keep them up and then pull right down. And it's just a unique exercise. Um, again, it's not one that you're going to use a tremendous amount of weight on. So it's just a really nice shaping and uh, developing the definition of the bicep exercise. And guys, that is the overhead pull down behind the neck.